Okay, it's 6.30. Shall we call the meeting to order? We have a quorum. Hey, Bruce. Thank you. Are there any additions to the agenda? I guess I would just like to make a clarification on the agenda um, for the potential executive session at the end. Um, it's not uh, here in the short version of the agenda, but in the select board memo. Uh, under that is not only zoning administrator transition, which I think may be appropriate for an executive session, but uh, signing the revised personnel policies seems like yeah, something we can do in this session. Yeah. Okay. 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 Because it's, it's, it's been in the last couple of years. We haven't signed it. Yeah, we haven't signed it. That's not necessarily your fault. Now we're doing the design. Okay. Now. Okay. Hey, there she is. Hello, Judith. Welcome. We have uh, we've called the meeting to order, and uh, we're just talking about additions to the agenda. We don't seem to have any. Uh, do you have any? Can you hear us, She's, Judith? Uh, um, I can hear you. I I missed the beginning of what you said, but I don't have any additions to the agenda. Okay, that was a question. And Judith, one comment: our website is down. Um, I, so I discovered I, that. <laughs> I'm gonna work to start emailing you documents that may be related to the meeting. Of course, the initial part of the meeting is all about the zoning administrator candidate, which you have essentially everything for that already. Um, but for anything coming up, I will work to. I'll start emailing you documents as as needed. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, maybe the domain will resurrect itself. Yeah, stranger things have happened. Okay, let us now review the minutes of May 16th, 2022. Are there any comments in the minutes of May 16th, 2022? I thought they looked fine, but you said, Carl, that you had some comment on them. I did. Okay. Yeah. John? Did you have fine with Okay. So I, mean, I recognize that there's a balance uh, between um just getting recording what we did which these do very well and um, going into too much detail about uh, why we did it and blow by blow discussions uh which uh, these don't do and i don't think is necessary uh however i think they could move a little bit more in the direction of giving some explanation to uh, future generations and to townspeople right now about what why we did what we did um, the first thing I would like to add, and I have all of these written down, Gina, in uh, a document that I can just email you afterwards if everybody's acceptable with my suggestions. Uh, the first one is, is uh, merely cosmetic, I would say. It's on the bottom of the first page uh, about the rec board. The board was com comfortable with the policy as written. I would like to amend and thank the recreation board for their work. Any objections? Okay. Um, second page, top of the second page, um, the take on drive, the take on drive name change. I, I would like to insert after the sentence, the state no longer allows hyphenated names. Uh, and I'd like to insert removing the hyphenation will cause some additional work in the town office, comma, but it will ultimately remove a potential source of confusion in databases. No objection to that, I'll move on. Confirmation of agreement for FY 2022 Sullivan Powers audit. At the end of the first sentence, I would like to uh, explain further. And this is adapted from the um, select board memo for that meeting. In December, 2019, the town signed an agreement with Sullivan Powers and company PC to do the town's financial audits for FY 2021 20, and 22. The company likes to certify the individual year components when they come up for multi-year agreements and so has presented an agreement for the town's FY 2022 financial audit. While the agreement's boilerplate language has changed slightly since the town signed off on the three-year agreement due to accounting standard shifts, the actual terms remain the same. Seeing no objections, going on to the curb, the curb cut question. Um, replace the last sentence of the first paragraph the board agreed to approve with the board recognized that the road requires significant work to be used regularly and reliably, especially for the sort of equipment required in home construction. 
However, the parcel meets zoning requirements and there does not appear to be a better place for a curb cut. Whether and how the road will be upgraded and who will pay for it will be the subject of future discussions with East Montpelier Road Forming Death Repair. I'm sorry, this is Judith. I, I know I wasn't at the meeting, but I'm wondering about that last bit, whether and how. I don't know what that adds, and it might invite more confusion and questions. I don't yeah, know that that's, that's needed. The question I have is, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I have to go back and watch the videos if these exact words were, were used, but, you know, I don't recall some of these things being said explicitly during the meeting. Well, so we, we, did not com we did not commit to upgrading the road. No, I agree. Make, make that clear. Yeah. yeah. And this, this is not a No, I mean, some of the point. added color that you're putting. I don't remember uh -huh. some of those specific words. I'd have to go back and watch the video to, that that oh, these, said. These are so not intended just, to be quotes. Be these, to, are, okay. these are paraphrases of, of what happened. Um, the, the um, I mean, if, if you're uncomfortable with whether and how, I'm comfortable with um, talking about potential improvements. Uh, potential improvements. So that would be. Um, I guess my concern is if that wasn't the topic of discussion, then why add that whole sentence? Well, it was a topic of discussion. It's reflected in the original draft as well with potential improvements. I just rephrased it. And I, you know, I'm thinking too that we don't need to specify who we're going to be discussing this with. It could be because the pro true. we're going to be discussing this with the property owners too, as well. That's true. And anybody in the town <clears throat> is welcome to come in and join the discussion. Maybe you want to say that as opposed to saying we're going to talk right. with Guthrie about it. Right. So we're not going to just talk with Guthrie. About subject to future discussions, period. Okay. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay. And that was it for that one. Need a motion. And need a motion to approve as amended. So move. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So if you know that you're recording the names of the person who and you know all our names. Amy, John. Perfect. <laughs> Ready to call me. Carl. Yes. I was planning to do these revisions to huh? these minutes. Uh, right, but she's taking oh, the minutes for this okay. meeting. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, uh, so all those in favor, you say aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed? You guys appear to have it. You guys do have it. Point of clarification, do we, do we I, I know that, that uh, um, Bruce refers to us as Mr. Jewett, Ms. Willis. Do we want to continue to do it that way? That's up to the board. Um, I was the one who started that and I'm comfortable with it, but uh, I have no strong feelings. What do you think, Judith? Um, I I don't have a preference um, one way or the other. I just wanted to reflect that I abstained from the voting on the minutes because I wasn't here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and, and you know Deirdre's here next to me. She's our our note taker for tonight. Hi, hello. Hi there. We didn't we didn't introduce everybody. Yeah, that was right. really, yeah. yeah. we're I, just really so polite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. What are you here for? I think that we should take a minute just to go around and say our first and last names no. <laughs> to our lovely right. note taker Deirdre. Yeah. Okay. In fact, we should probably get out those placards. We can get out the placards. Too. No. I'm I mean, sorry not, not this here. time, but for next <laughs> okay. meeting. Gosh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, would you like to begin? Sure. I'm Amy Willis, select board member. I'm Carl Entnayer, I'm vice chair of the select board. And I'm John Jewett, select board member. And I'm Judith Dillon, select board member. Do you know you back? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we have emails. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and have you met Seth, the chairman? Okay, oh, yeah. you'll meet him sometime separately. Around eight o'clock. He's coming yeah. in later. He's yeah. not going to oh, participate yes. in the beginning of the session. He's oh, going to yes. be here around eight. Okay. So you'll meet him. It will be hard to miss him. Yes. <laughs> yes. Make his presence. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, any comments on the May 23rd, 2022 select board meeting minutes? Okay, I would like to, in the in-person public attendance, uh, add the name of Gilberto from Orca Media. And what is Gilberto's last name, do you know? Okay. Uh, Do you know the spelling of his name? Uh, G-I-L-B-E-R-T-O. Okay. That, that's just the first name. Oh, okay. 
Okay, wonderful. Me, so, yeah. Thank you. And then it, it appears that Tom Brazier was representing the Times Argus. I'd like to clarify that. The Tom Brazier oh, no. semicolon, the semicolon and yeah. then David Delcor, comma, Times yeah, Argus. Yeah, David didn't sign it and I was like, okay. sure who he was. Right, okay. So. The article came in. Right. And then, um, I don't know, to say that the chair arrived and assumed control of the meeting sounds a little bit uh, harsh. I, I'd suggest took over chairing the meeting. At 8.03 p.m. Um, and then down in the discussion of the revised quote for the Dodge Ram, uh, at the end of the first paragraph, the board was not pleased with the price increase, but recognized that it would be difficult or impossible to obtain a comparable vehicle at a lower price, even with the increase. Just to let townspeople know we were not happy throwing away another $4,000 of their money or $3,500 of their money. But we didn't feel we had much choice in the matter. Okay, that was it for that one. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as amended? To the May 23rd meeting? So moved. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay? All those abstaining? Aye. Okay, motion passed. And Gina, I will email these two documents to you. Why don't I do that right now, just so it's done? Yes, please. Yeah. It's Diaz Hickson Santos. D-I-A-Z Hickson S-A-N-T-O-S. Okay. Did, did you get that, Gina? Do you want me to write it down? Uh, yeah. If you could, please. Okay. I'm trying to email documents. Okay, so sure. Can... I have to reopen something. I just wrote. Thank you for that quick response. Okay, the uh, next item on the docket is public comment. Is there a member of the public who would like to comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to B, the zoning administra administrator transition. This is a potential executive session. The first part is board work session to discuss the ZA position. And then at 7.15, we have the ZA candidate interview. And is a candidate scheduled to come in here in person at 7.15? Correct. Okay, very good. So would, would the board like to go into executive session to prepare to interview the candidate? Is there a need to? Um, well, we'll be developing questions that the candidate if Don't we already have the questions? Well, we'll be, we be discussing our interview strategy. Those were a draft. Yeah. Okay. I think, we, go, I think we need to go to executive session for about 10 minutes or so. Okay. okay. Uh, are you making the motion to- I'll make a motion so? we are executive session under title whatever it is. <laughs> title nine. <laughs> Very good. Um, BSA 313A3 yeah. in title um, chapter <laughs> one. That's what she said. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. So- you, you moved, did you second it, Amy? Sure. Okay, very good. We're in all our motions here. <laughs> <laughs> all, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Uh, you know when the record, you guys have started recording on ORCA, it is now 8, 10 p.m. and we have emerged from executive session, having conducted an interview of, of uh, prepared for an interview of a zoning administrator candidate and having interviewed said candidate, uh, we are taking no action at this time. 
However, we have scheduled another meeting of the select board for a week from today, Monday, June 30th, 13th at 6.30 p.m. to uh, discuss further action on this issue. And also for the minutes, uh, we were joined during the executive session by Scott Hess. His name is spelled up on the board. He's a member of the Planning Commission. So the next item on the agenda is a consideration of the warrant to impound unlicensed dogs. We Gina? also have a town clerk report. A town clerk report. Okay. C. 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 Item C. Item C. Town clerk report. Very good. That was Our a town schedule for 7.45. Okay. Oh, thank you. Chair is here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is you're, this a good time? You are here in the nick of time. Oh, yeah. perfect timing. Yes. We, um, we have worked through B, finished B. We've just come out of executive session, oh. and we are about to jump into the town clerk report. Perfect. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so we're going to do C. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You bet. <laughs> Over so to you, rather, sir. Rather than a formal town clerk report report, mm -hmm. I generally spend this time with you to talk about the records retention schedules and how we're managing that. So we have been managing them sort of on the last, well, for the last three years now. Um, we have a schedule that we follow for shredding certain financial documents and uh, recycling a number of others. We've been sort of in the groove of doing that a couple of times a year now, and our next schedule won't happen until after the audit is finished in August. The only change that we would like to request is actually an addition to the retention plan. And the, the current treasurer, Don Welch, and I were talking about it, and he, he is very concerned about the liability we may have in holding people's checks that they give us when they pay their taxes or any other item. He holds them as part of a deposit in the vault in a small box. Um, the box is small. There's not a whole lot of, a lot of room. And he's concerned that, you know, these are other people's checks. Why do we even keep them? They've been scanned and sent to the bank. So he and I talked, well, I talked to a couple of other clerks around. Most people don't keep them at all. Um, but between Don and I, we thought that it was appropriate to keep them for six months or until after the audit for that year is complete. So what we're looking for is we want to have the last tax payments. So for example, this last tax payment date, dated for May 15th. Um, we're going to hold on to those for the next six months. Our tax audit for this year will already be completed. It will be safe by next November to recycle those. We'll actually shred them, basically, throw them in the shred bin. And then we'll have the new checks. The, we've never had people come and ask. Sorry, I'm not looking this way. We've never had people come and ask who paid for what. Um, and it's really difficult to say who paid whose taxes. We don't know. We just know that they're paid. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, the, the state has actually not developed a retention for this. I am suggesting that it be um, under accounting and, as I said, until the audit is complete, or for six months, um, whichever is later. So, can I ask a couple questions? Sure. Why are we keeping the checks when we already get the money? I don't get it. It's, a, it's something that has been happening here historically for years. And how long well, do we keep them now? Well, now wow. we're keeping them for at least a year. Okay. Um, we actually had to get rid of some because we just didn't have any room for them anymore <laughs> um, last year. So we're probably looking at about nine months worth right now. Mm -hmm. And what, and what do other town clerks do? What do other towns do? They get rid of them. Right away? Yeah. Why don't we? Yeah. yeah why well, don't we? I don't get why we keep Because we don't have it in the retention plan, yeah. so I'm asking you if we can put it in the retention plan. I think we should do that. Do you need a motion on that? Um, I think that we Well, wait do. a minute. Do we have any more questions about it? Yeah, um, do you? I don't. Seth, do you have another question? I, I'm just trying to think of a reason to keep the check. Why do we do yeah. that? I mean... 
We already get the money. We've got the money, and it's scanned into the bank. So I'm just trying to process it in my key brain. Why you the bank would have a copy of the yes. check. Well, you, you if indicated that, copy were needed. Yes. You, you indicated that um, we know the taxes are paid, but we don't know who paid them. And I can imagine circumstances where, it, when they become delinquent later, that it might be useful to know who paid them the last time around. No, because the person who is the owner of that property is in charge of taking care of that payment. It doesn't matter who's paid them in the past. That's, that's true, but you know, we get into complicated estate issues and it's not clear who has ownership of the property is responsible for paying. I don't know. Has it, have we ever had an issue with the, the ownership property of the property? property owner is responsible for paying. Yeah, mm -hmm. simple yeah, as that. It will be determined by who wrote the check. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we in, have in the early case, we used to like write checks when they found people were delinquent on our taxes, hoping they could take over the land. You right. can't. No. The person who owns property is responsible for the taxes, and right. if you're paid, they still own the land. Now, we have, a, we have a situation right now where there is a, an adult child who is making payments on their parents' tax right. bill. Uh -huh. right. Their parents are still responsible for the tax bill. Right, right. But the taxes are getting paid, so taxes are getting paid. Right. But it might be, you know, useful to be able to contact that adult child, and would we have that information? We wouldn't have it check? on the check, because, well, in this case, because this check is generated by the bank. But um, legally, could you? Legally, if I don't not know. not the if owner they, of the property, I don't know that legally. You'd have to go you to the could. owner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you you couldn't. There's nothing legally to keep you from calling somebody up and asking questions, right? I mean, you aren't going about to put the taxes. Up, uh, about yeah, about the, their parents, for example. And we can't contact their parents. And why do we well, want to do that? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we don't. <laughs> Let's put it ourselves <laughs> into a corner. He's yeah. just tickling the bears. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying Sorry. to figure this out. Hey, yeah. Judith, Judith, what, Judith what you, she wants to say something. Judith. Did you yeah. miss Seth at the beginning of this? Well, uh, just to respond to Carl, I don't know that it would be appropriate or. Um, Productive to actually contact the adult child, you know, well, are you going to pay this? It's it's not up to them. It's not their responsibility whether they pay or don't pay. So having a history of who paid before, it's still up to the property owner to pay. So we can't be, you know, dunning the adult child to pay the taxes because they've done it in the past. No, I am not suggesting that we are going to dun anybody. I'm, I'm suggesting <laughs> no. that, that it might be useful to find out some information mm -hmm. about a property owner that uh, we could get through the check. Uh, That's by not to PC, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah. I don't disagree yeah. with your thought process, but yeah. it probably is not appropriate. In this case, the check comes, it's bank generated check. Yeah. We yeah. have no information. Okay. I think we should get okay. rid of the checks. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know why you'd want to keep them. So do you want to get rid of them completely, or do you want to keep them until... I want to get the money out of the check. You see it. <laughs> we then, do that pretty then well. Then get rid of it. I, I mean, how long does it take to make sure the checks are cleared? Yeah, that's all the time. Three days. Yeah, uh -huh. pretty quick. That's it. Three days. So how about um, clearance date plus a week? Okay, mm -hmm. that works for me. Wow, we compromised. This Thank is awesome. you. This is Great. democracy. <laughs> it is, actually. <laughs> well, I, it's I called say grass I was roots. being conservative, so... <laughs> Okay. Thank you. So You're if welcome. we could mm -hmm. we could re ratify this um, action so that this can be added to the retention selectman select board approved retention plan, that would be right. wonderful. And and just to clarify, when we say uh, when it clears plus a week, mm -hmm. then how do you interpret that? Do you must you uh, shred it on that particular day, or that yeah. you just have the option of doing it, and when you get around to it, when there's some extra time, you do it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be on the exact day. Yeah. Right. It gives us the it gives us the option to do it right away or not. Right. Basically. Yeah. Good. Thank I you. mean, with especially with our limited space, we yeah. we have to work towards getting rid of paper. That's space unnecessary. Space is gonna go up in flames one day. No, because that vault is fireproof. That'll be the only corner of this. Okay. 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 Anything Old else, Robin? Paper. Paper. What's that? Say it again. She was just describing the Old office that I paper. have. Old creepy, creepy paper. paper. <laughs> Old smelly, creepy, so, musty anything paper. else, Robin? Um. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, this is pretty standard stuff. It hasn't changed a whole lot. This is the first change we've requested since, you know, three years ago. Mm -hmm. That's not too big a deal. And we are really thankful it's that you working pretty well. So pioneered this record retention policy and are following it. 
would have to, otherwise we'd have no room to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good housekeeping, we right. need so what, what are we doing next? Are you going to revise the, the policy with this change and bring it back to us to approve, or um, how are we doing that? Would you? Is it a motion? Or do they sign? Um, I think that we we need to have a motion to append yeah. to the existing. Um, we should probably look at. Plan. Yeah. yeah. So why don't Let's I make a motion? Why don't I? Yeah. To change the policy. Well, yeah. reflecting that. We'll, 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 I'll, I'll set it up so that you have it for the next meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. yeah. that way we okay. can review the whole policy. Healthy. Are you looking for the policy or the, or the plan? Because we're not changing the policy. The retention plan itself is all I'm asking. Oh, thank you for keeping me honest. Let's, okay. look, at, let's look at the plan. Yeah, because the well, policy is Well, let's look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because there are some members of the select board who probably never have, seen it. have never seen it. Yeah. Oh, right. We've got new people. Since it's yeah. interesting yeah. stuff. Perfect. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so Gina, could you put up both the plan and the policy on the website for us to review yeah. uh, for next time? Once we have a functioning website, yeah. I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Sorry, that's a little upsetting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, we make the motion? Uh, no, we don't wait. need to make a motion. We're oh, gonna, you're just going to wait until next time. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So, can we move on to D? I'm in the crack the whip mode. We're yes. Good? Yep. Okay. Consideration of warrant to impound on licensed dogs. Sorry. What? Uh, now that you read it, may I speak? Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, Gina, did you get my email? Yeah, and the version you have is the revised. Okay. But you, yes, and Rosie is aware of the of the change. Okay. Yeah. So, so just so you know, yes. um, we were originally sent or posted on the website a version of this, which was given to us as a draft last year, uh, where the uh, animal control officer was commanded to impound unlicensed dogs, and last year we softer, uh, softened that to authorize the ACO to do that, and I requested that it, the language be the same this year as last year. Okay. Yeah, I think that happened last year. You guys did that in the meeting, and then Bruce took it back and changed the language. Right. So, so if you look at the so website, my computer. <laughs> if you look at the website, what was approved last year, then right. it has the, the language that I described. So uh, I just want to make sure I'm looking at the right version that you're looking for. So the first line, it says commanded. That's what you're looking for? That's the language? Uh, no, that's the language that I asked to have changed. And because the website is down, I can't pull it up, but I think it's probably, is it in our packet here? I got it right here. I think you have the revised. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. By the authority yeah. of the state of Vermont. Yeah. You are hereby authorized to impound any dogs and wolf hybrids, not duly licensed, etc. And that's the one we're working on? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. and can I ask, um, is the second sentence, a dog or wolf hybrid that is impounded may be transferred to a animal shelter or res rescue organization? Is that still in there? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Because the next sentence, we use two different, a different term. If the dog or wolf hybrid cannot be placed in an adoptive home or transferred to a humane society, or rescue organization. Do we mean we should either say animal shelter or humane society, not both? You see what I mean? I should oh, she's talking about the, the animal shelter. The language is standard straight from the statute, mm -hmm. and that's what we've been using. The third sentence just um, you know leaves open another possibility. She wants to change the. Yeah, I don't, society. Why, I, why what what do you want to change? Make it standard. The sentence is a dog or wolf hybrid that is impounded may be transferred to an animal shelter or rescue organization for the purpose of finding an adoptive home for the dog or hybrid. The next sentence is what happens if you can't do that? Mm -hmm. If the dog or wolf hybrid cannot be placed in an adoptive home or transferred to a Humane Society or Rescue Organization. So you're saying it should be either Humane Society, Humane Society, or Animal Shelter, Animal Shelter, correct? Yeah, in both sentences, exactly. Uh, I see. So Animal Shelter change to Humane Society. Uh, in practice, this makes no difference because the Humane Society will not take an impounded dog and the, because we know who the owner is, and we have no rescue organization that we work with. 
I think you're just looking for consistency in the in the term. Yeah. So the, yeah, is that? I'm, I'm looking for our our language to make sense. Um, so Rosie, do you have any I'm advice or sure. preference? So do you have a specific edit that you want to suggest? Yeah, she wants to put animal shelter in both. Pick, pick either animal shelter or humane society. Pick one of the two, not both. You're, how about animal shelter? Yeah. In both in both sentences. In both sentences, no. Sure. Okay. Since we That's a more generic about. term, so mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I what is the purpose of the second paragraph? I'm not saying it's not necessary, but it will help me to give my edit. It's uh the statutory language. It's, it's to ask for a report, which I don't think, as a select board member, I've ever received from an animal control officer, and as an animal control officer, I haven't given to a select board. What? <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> so, well, off of your um, head, basically. Because I'm not seeing, I just went to 3587, and there's, um, let me just see if there's something about giving a report. So, Deidre, just so you understand, I'm an animal control officer in town. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for that purpose, I will recuse myself from this vote. Wow. But, but I'll give input on it. But do you ever see a rabid skunk on your property? Don't no, call me because that's not an animal control officer. <laughs> you don't go spreading that rumor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Domestic animals only. What if I have a pet uh, that's an animal control officer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not letting me over this back. Um, yeah, I get that it's from the uh, statute. It's just really poorly drafted. Um, but uh, it's, it's, is that is that uncommon with statutes? Yeah. Which one nowadays is? it is. Yeah. The, the 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 goal is moving forward to be clear and use clear language and avoid hear off, fail not, and do return. You know, <laughs> that doesn't really say anything. So, uh, like so you know, provide notice to, provide report to something anyway. Uh -huh. But the, the other, the more substantive question that I had is um, how does the, the first paragraph says what you do with it. It's either to give it to an animal shelter or rescue organization. Um, and then after that, the dog's destroyed, but you don't destroy the dog. Someone else destroys the dog. How do no. you know what, how many dogs have been destroyed? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The second paragraph asks, for the number uh, of dogs. The first paragraph does not imply that the rescue organization or anybody other than the animal control officer is going to destroy the dog. The reverse. So you, you have an option of destroying the dog in a humane way as an animal control officer, or you can pass it off Please. to somebody else. And then you know how many have been destroyed versus how many would yes, go. because I've shot them with my own gun. I could have gone my whole life without knowing that, but that's yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> oh, we were getting along so well, Carl. Um, okay. it, it's never happened. Um, when, when I first joined the select board, I was asked to sign one of these uh, requiring that they be destroyed, not that they be impounded, but requiring that they be destroyed. And the statute was changed to allow us, and we all ignored that. Everybody ignored it. We signed it because it was statutorily required. And uh, the statute apparently was changed to allow us to uh, have them be impounded, right. not destroyed. So much silliness here. So what are we doing here? Can we just pass it? Uh, yeah, can we just so at least change the last line? We don't have to say giveth under our hands at you know <laughs> aided at East Montpelier. That's a, we don't need to have that. You know what I'm saying? 
Okay. What would you recommend? Just say dated sure. at East Montpelier, Vermont, this blank day yeah. of. That's it. Okay. Gina, do you have those amendments? And, and let me see, we need to be clear on who's keeping track of amendments to something like this. Gina, is that you? Oh, I'm doing it right now. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to send it to the printer. Okay. Good. Okay, so we can pass the revised. Right. Just, just one small question. The 90 days from date hereof, that's the date of our signing this. So this requirement is only due once a year, or is it due 90 days after you transfer or dispose of the dog? Because this doesn't say it's after. It's it's thereof, right? My understanding is 90 days after the incident. After this signature. But yeah, that's my understanding too. But okay. I've never. All right. I've never impounded or destroyed any dogs. Okay, all right, because that's what it says. Um, I just want to make sure that that was the intent. Okay. Right. So we need a motion to pass it. Right, and yes. I'm recusing no, myself from this entirely. Oh. Okay, we yeah, can make the motion. No. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. I don't think that's because of um, recusal. <laughs> John, you made the motion. Is there, um, can I just, I'll make a motion and just yeah. say that, uh, make a motion that we approve the warrant to impound unlicensed dogs um, for uh, June 6, 2022, with amendments that were recommended tonight. Yep. Is that okay? Deletions and recommend yeah, and amendments. And amendments. Yeah. You don't have to say deletions. Perfect. Amendments. Perfect. So move. Okay. We have a second? I'll second that. You will? No, okay. of course. <laughs> Why not? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Four of us voted, and Kyle recused himself. Correct. For the record. You good? Can we move to the next? E. Uh, consideration of quote for completion of land record digitization project. So essentially, my understanding of the history of this was. There was a number in the previous town administrator's head that this would cost. We're catching up to that number now. Yeah. <laughs> so the quote came mm -hmm. in, it was lower than expected. Good. Essentially, well, but where we are right now is we're catching up to the higher number that oh. was expected back then. Oh. So originally they quoted 28,000 to digitize the land records from 1848 to 1988. Um, so far we paid $19,555 towards that. There's another 8625 that they have yet to bill. But in addition to that, we now have a quote um, that's another 21,000 to finish this project. Wow. Back to 1848. So the reason wow. the reason for this is, well, yes. the town clerk can also articulate this, <laughs> the well, reasons behind it. The reason behind it is mostly that um, there are very few companies that have that do digitization of land records. The ones that do have been inundated with requests due to COVID mostly. So they have come up with different ways to quote their systems. And the quote that we received was based on each document being two and a quarter or two and a half pages long. Now that's great, except that as we get closer to modern times, we have, we have documents that are literally 16 to 18 pages long. Mm -hmm. Your standard mortgage used to be a page. Right. It's now 18 pages. Oh. So that's what we ran into as far as the document number, the page numbers are concerned. The other concern that came up is that um, because of that many extra documents, they index by document and there's a separate indexing fee. The indexing is what allows us to find it in the system. So it's really important. We want to pay for that. Yeah, we do want to pay for that. Um, we were incredibly smart way back when Sylvia was here getting all of this stuff microfilmed. So all Avenue had to do is take that microfilm and digitize it for us. There are right. many towns out there that are paying literally $100,000 to get their land <laughs> records digitized right now. Okay. So in any case, um, I'm not saying it's a deal of the century, but I believe that, that the fees are fair. And the last quote that Gina was talking about includes books one through 20, which are all handwritten. Wow. There's a higher cost for indexing handwritten documents because of the 
legibility basically and right. making sure that they get accurate information. I will say Avenue has done a fantastic job so far in getting us online, doing it accurately and doing it completely. Before they deliver to our online source, they send me any questions. And the first, the first time I had literally three pages of, we're missing this page number. We're missing this page number, mm -hmm. or where's it says is a discharge here. This, we're not seeing the discharge. Wow. So they're really being meticulous about how they're doing it. And um, that's irreplaceable, if you will, right. because the whole idea of having those there, we've got to be able to find those records. We've got to be able to trace back the chain of title yeah. and ensure that mortgages have been discharged. So um, what we're asking for today is for you folks to approve the overage and to- The 21,000. And to um, approve this last piece to bring us back down to book one and have everything digitized. Now, do we get any money back on that from anywhere else? Um, we do get, we get yeah. money from Avenue whenever any of the attorneys are online looking at our documents. If they're looking at them, it's free. If yeah. they print them, they're charged $3 a page. We get $1.50 back. Oh, that's right. So really there, nice. we get a, about 100 bucks a month. It's not a huge amount, no. but it is pretty steady. Um, we had a pretty... Pretty quiet last few months. Of course, there's not been any inventory in the real estate market right now, but yeah. it is picking up. And um, we do have a number of attorneys that are just not coming in anymore <clears throat> because they don't have to. Yeah. They'd rather pay the three dollars and spend the money to come here. So and we haven't we gotten grants in the past to do that? Um, it is we did get I, we I don't know that we've gotten grants, but what we did is we always had money in a preservation fund yeah, right. that, that we've been using. That we've been using. Yeah. And in fact, this last bunch was paid for strictly by the $4 a page. Each page that's recorded costs $15. Of that $15, we are required now by law to save $4 and put it in a separate preservation fund. Right. So we used up the last of that preservation fund, I believe. Yeah. Um, but that keeps growing every, every yeah. day. Every yeah. time I record something, it's another four dollars. Right. Um, so we can use. So that. we can, we could use that, but there's not enough in there. Right no, nothing. Right. So but after, we could we could use ARPA money. It is ARPA eligible. Oh. Or we could use our our own funding from our general fund, and then use ARPA to to reimburse it. Right. 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 We can use that for reimbursing. So. So after. Uh, Avenue finishes this project for us. Yes. Will this relationship with them, where they pay us a buck fifty per page that's uh, printed out by somebody, will that continue? It does continue, and in fact, we have a monthly contract with them because they are our records manager. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, they're still involved in the process. They're still involved, yeah. and you know, it's. Okay. Um, I it's, think we should probably just do it, especially we'll, if we could reimburse ourselves yeah. at some point. Yeah. And when, yeah. When we end and, up, Go ahead. I'm wondering if um, we're going to, if there was any funding attached to, I think it was um, Act 171, which is the Uniform Laws, Standards and Best Practices um, applicable to land records and notaries. Was there any funding associated with that? I'm just scanning it now. I'm not seeing anything, my, but. My understanding, um, Judith, is that the only funding that they were um, giving well, that they had submitted with that particular law, and that's a relatively new one, so I may not know all of the intricacies, is that they were actually going to fund a full-time person at the Secretary of State's office to assist okay. towns in A, finding vendors, B, finding money, and C, teaching them how to use it. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, would, I think we should, it makes sense, of a no-brainer um, that we need to do it, and unfortunately there's not more, but it seems reasonable from what um, Rosie and Gina are saying, and we can get reimbursed if we want to, and it seems like we have a funding source to help offset some of those costs as well. So. It, it could be that in two years I'll have made enough in recording fees to, to pay it back. Right. Yeah. 
Right. Okay. And what will we end up with um, with these handwritten records? Will they be digitized in such a way that we can search the words and everything? It'll be like that we're typed. Um, you can't search the words okay. in our in our current system as it is right now, but you will have an image that you can read. Okay. Um, so it would yeah. be typed, it won't be the handwritten anymore. No, it is handwritten. It would just continue yeah, to be handwritten. It, it's the actual document. Okay. Land records are required by law to be permanent. Okay. So what we're doing is we're making photocopies, if you will, of the permanent okay. records. Got it which is also a good thing to have in the event that the place burns down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I wasn't wishing. <laughs> okay. So, you, yes. so, this, so like Carl asked what to just do. This brings us from book one to book 20, or does this bring this, us from book one all the way up? This brings us all the way back to book one. It from where? Us from, from here? From the beginning of time, it, it makes <laughs> it, yeah. says, no, it finishes it's the process. Done. It's yeah. everything, and we've been. I mean, you've been, been working been. on this for how many years now? I mean, it's it started. Well, we started. We started about four years ago yeah. with this. So I mean, when we do a when we do a motion, we're going to say approve the overage, and and the other part of it would be to bring the books um, back from book from now to the beginning we don't of time. Have to say that we, <laughs> just, we can just approve. Don't the write quote. that down. Yeah. Approve just, the quote. We can approve the quote. Okay. It's there. And, and Deidre, if you choose to refer to the 1848 date, which I, I think is useful to do in the minutes. The it's reason, actually 1849. Okay, the reason for that date is because East Montpelier and Montpelier were one town at the time, and they separated. So any records from before that time would be in Montpelier? It, they were in Montpelier. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So as far as we're concerned, from charter day one, right. all the way to current day, it's we will done. be digitized. It will be done, and that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. It really is. Wow. So I move to approve the um, expected expenditure from Avenue to complete the digitization of the land records back to the beginning of East Montpelier's land records in 1849? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Okay. Town Treasury report. Michelle was going to join, but I'm not sure if she's having some technical issues. Okay. Um, uh, we probably have I don't some. think there was anything excessively of major to note um, in the monthly report. No big expenditures are out of line with our budget. No. Actually, she may be getting ready to join in. Okay. Yeah, she just texted me. Um, Okay, so no red flags, we can move on then, because we only have about another 20 items to work on. <laughs> <laughs> so, without thrashing us to death, maybe we can move on? Or does anybody have questions? All right. So, it's a brief report, but I, I think we should move to the next item. Okay. Excellent All right. idea. All I think right. she's coming in, so if you do want to hear her, Michelle. Oh, she's coming she's in. You can hear her voice. Hi, no, Michelle. she's. I see a phone. Oh, okay. Michelle, I think you're on mute. Oh, okay. Yeah, she is. I guess we better not move on. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll speak in the event she's having some technical. She was having some phone challenges today. Okay. So for a delinquent tax collector, um, we currently have outstanding 230000 I know there are at least three payments that did come in that are not reflected in that number yet. Um, but obviously, notices just went out. Payments are coming in, so we expect that number to continue to decrease. Yep. Isn't so, that a little higher than? It is a little higher. That's than what normal. I thought. Yes. What was the number last year at this time? I think it was around like either 180, I think. That's or what so. I thought. Yeah. 50,000 less. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I might add that the Rogers properties, there are two of them that oh, yeah. are have been recently sold. Yeah. And I have seen the property transfer tax return, but not the deeds yet. But that is in the works, and I'm told that when the deeds come, we will have. And that's those probably payments. part of the. That's two tax. out of five yeah. of those parcels. Mm -hmm. Can we ask how our friend is? She paid. Um, Your friend? No, oh. ours. <laughs> uh, who was? 
Uh, Mr. Goldman? Yeah. Gold. Yes, he paid. Oh, he paid? Wow. All but $625. Wow. I'm sorry, wow. my other turn. That's wow. But so all that amount is a lot of individuals. Yeah, because so, last year it was I know. one individual. <clears throat> well, you're talking 180 last year, and he right. owed like 100 or something, whatever yeah. it was. So we have a lot of people delinquent. Mm -hmm. That's a cause. That's a concern. Mm -hmm. Huh. Michelle, the standard way to unmute oneself on the phone, I believe, is star six. Um, so. There, there you go. Yay. Hello. Hi. Thank you. You bet. Hello. So, uh, we've, we've been talking about you, not quite behind your back, but uh, without you able to chime in. Is there, is there something you'd like to add? Going to the um, town treasure. Okay. So on the town treasurer report, you're, you're, you don't have anything to yeah. add into that report. It looked like it was pretty standard. Um, yeah, it was pretty standard. Okay. It was. Everything was... Um, no red no flags. Big, no big things. I think I... No, I heard you talking about the delinquent taxes, and we got about $32,000 in... thirty-two four. Oh. Okay. So okay. that gets subtracted from the two thirds. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, and that doesn't include the two parcels I was talking about. Yeah. Right, which is probably a significant amount, yes, too. Yes, it does. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Well, thank you for okay. Okay. tuning in. I think the only other question <laughs> I know is with the um, delinquent tax collection policy, which I provided the board with copies of, just yes. to ensure there's no changes that you would like made to the policy. I think Bruce previous town administrator indicated that this is something you just kind of check in on each year to ensure that you want no changes to the policy as it stands today. Okay, so last year didn't we do away with the penalty because of COVID or something? I wasn't here for that meeting. This is the standard. I uh, believe we might have. We didn't do that? I'm did pretty we? sure we did. I, I wasn't Which here. Which penalty are you talking the about? The 8% is automatically oh, yeah. assessed as the next day. Yeah. I think, I think you did. I'm you did a graduated sure. thing. Yes, two, four, eight yep. or something. Yep. I think that was the first year. I don't think it was last year. Okay. That was two years ago. Okay. Okay, so this is just a standard policy. Yes, yes, this is a standard policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I think we should accept it as it is and move on, certainly. Unless we want to parse every word. <laughs> I liked your first statement. Yeah. I just, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move to the next one. Okay. Um, so the next item on the agenda is H. Um, discussion of Chase and Chase proposal for county and county road culvert oversight. So, so this is it. essentially the proposal. It's really yeah. kind of the, essentially the same as what you saw just now more formalized and mm -hmm. a bit more information about what scope of services would be provided mm -hmm. um so this is because you know we need potentially may need some help in reviewing these projects and overseeing these projects right i, I think it's a question of whether we want to move forward with this this is something that is new that chase and chase really has never done before yeah um or if we feel confident in our road foreman and he can kind of keep an eye on what's going on. And it's really a decision for the board determining if you, I mean, I haven't been involved in road projects before, so I'm not sure. The, the issue was that there's a concrete work involved in this building, like um, head walls and stuff for culverts and that. They're not precast? I, I, Bruce was, I remember, just remember from a past meeting, Bruce saying that, that that's, not, that's not one of um, our, our, uh, our Guthrie's uh, strong points. Right. He can deal with paving, but he can't deal so much with that. So I don't know what's involved here, uh, how much, uh, how complicated those head walls will be. So, if they're, but they may be precast. Well, it could and that's be. that's nothing that you can't test the concrete on precast. I guess you could, but. No, you, 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 you wouldn't could. want to, but. But you don't it, usually. Does it say in here that they're precast? I don't know. I, I don't know, but they have been pretty standard precast a lot of these culverts uh, right here it involves the removal of existing culvert installation of a new culvert construction of new concrete head walls doesn't say precast or not well, precast is usually with box culverts right 
concrete box culverts. Yep. They're precast, they put them together. Yep. But when you put in a regular culvert, you, you normally build them. You have to pour the wall in place. Mm, I don't know if we've ever done any any small play where we had to pour the wall in place. They've always been precast. Hmm. Pretty sure. I don't remember seeing any. I mean, a lot of this is because Doug Newton used to oversee all these projects. I know. We don't have that resource. Right. So it's it's just a question of if we think this is a. Well, we don't. Yeah, okay, I know. So we don't it's, know anything. It's uncharted territory, right? right. It is. So, so um, why don't we pay for it this time? Have these guys do it and have Guthrie go with them, <laughs> and and learn from. Well, I, I don't know done. what they're doing. That's what my... Well, this, this is a total estimated fee, um, so it's based on time and materials. So if we work with them and we find that the original plan here was too ambitious in terms of their number of visits there because the project is simpler or Guthrie knows more about this particular construction than may, maybe we thought he did, then we can say, come less often. Well, they're going to provide written uh, field reports, yeah, which I'm, is important, and it, they're also going to review the construction. It's important for the owner to have somebody who knows what he's doing on site. Right. Are we using project. state money on this? What's Pardon? that? Are we using state money? Uh, yeah, part of it's a grant. Well, I, I don't know if they want to have some, some engineering documentation on that. Well, we're going to have documentation because they're going to provide field reports. If we hire them. Yes. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. could say right. no. I don't <laughs> think we should know. say no because we're, right. we're, it's a lot of money. Right. I'm just kind of feeling out for what we thought. I, I agree that we, should, that we should hire these folks to do this without Doug Newton being there. Yeah. Because there's going to be changes, too. You've right. got to realize that when you get into these kind of projects, sometimes there's stuff, stuff that comes up. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if we have absolutely no knowledge of what's going on there, we're going to be operating blindly. Right. Right. So if we've got somebody that's on site and says, hey, this needs to be done, more gravel needs to be put in, blah, 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 then that gives us a basis for approving or disapproving uh, a change. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if the state audits us for using the money, we can show them what we did. Right. Yeah. It's, right. it's probably the best mm -hmm. thing to do. Right. Yes. And, yeah, and address it, this Doug Newton that we're mentioning left and right. Uh, he was a retired engineer with the state, uh, with VTrans, who uh, helped us out for years at a low price on um, just representing our interests in construction projects. Okay, so thinking about inspection services that uh, the town has employed in the past, it's like Stantec, was them, and we had them on the parking lot over here. Mm -hmm. And they usually work on a percentage basis of the whole project. So it was, what was it, 18% or, I can't remember what Bruce was saying last It was time. a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. So even if it's 15% and it's, and it's $300,000 between the two, which I think it's about what it is, or is it a little bit more? That that's still 45,000 right. yeah. bucks. So this is actually a reasonable yes. inspection fee. Yes. Hmm. That's, thank right. you for that yeah. perspective. Yeah. So we should do it. Yeah. So... So we need a motion, right? Right. We should make a motion that we're going to hire them for the... Okay. Yes. So I move to accept the proposal for engineering services change of scope number one from Chase and Chase for the purpose of overseeing construction of the Morse Road and Barnes Road culvert. Is that going too fast? No. It's, okay. two, it's two culverts, though. Yes. Yeah. Culverts. 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 Yeah. Morse Road and Barnes Road culverts. Yeah. 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 Second? I've used up most of mine. See? <laughs> okay, we have a second? Do I've it. overused mine tonight. <laughs> Your what? This? My motioning. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm getting motion sickness. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. The eyes appear to have it, they do have it. You don't have to quote me on that. We're done. <laughs> you know, you're being recorded. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Uh, watch it. 830 well okay consideration of notice of intent to participate in the FY 2023 municipal roads grants and aid program there's only five minutes allocated for this this is an annual this is a three. program that we do every year <laughs> I know. so I have the form to be yeah. signed yeah. yeah chair Gardner if you sure we want to proceed then the board wants to authorize you to sign we can yeah. sign that and submit this Yep. Yeah, we, we want to be able to get money from the state. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. very good. Right now. <laughs> Judith? I move that we authorize the chair to sign the yep. grant program. Grants and aid program. Grants and aid program. 
Grant's name for the record. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Ayes have it. I'll make it short. Um, so part, part of your job, Deidre, by the way, is to uh, translate some of the language that we spit out for these motions into something that looks good in the minutes. Um, Jay, Board of Listers request to consult town attorney. So um, the listers had an, uh, a recent decision in which they have denied a request, and they are just concerned that it could result in an appeal and the potential for legal mm -hmm. action. So um, they have provided me documentation that we can send to the town attorney to brief the town attorney on the situation should we need his assistance in the future. It remains unknown what yeah. may, if anything, will come of this, but I'm bringing it to the board for authorization. And it just brought me to the question of what you all want me to do in the future when something like this comes up. Oh, you Judith, know, Judith's got a hand up. Yes. Um, I, think, I think in the future that these things come up whenever there's a potential for needing to discuss an issue with an attorney that you go and talk to the executive sessions because the... Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In, in this case, there's no need to get into any specifics yet, you know, but... Um, yeah, yeah, of course. But I think, it's, I think it's prudent to provide the attorney with early information. That's right. exactly what we're trying to do here. Well, yes, well, exactly. Hold on, let me understand. The, the listers have already made a decision, is that correct? They've made a decision, and correct. And have they issued it? Yes. Okay, so is there any advantage in anticipation that there might be legal pushback of spending money on attorney's fees, having the attorney review documents when nothing might ever happen. I, this was a request made by the listers. So uh -huh. if this is a, uh, I'm. So the listers, they, they do want the attorney to review the documents mm -hmm. in anticipation of legal action. In the event, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Judith, sound, what do you think of that, Judith? Well, I, I think we should be cautious about this conversation um, because we don't want to say, I think we need to be cautious about having this conversation. I think that um, if there is legal action, there will be enough time, you know, the, the attorney would be provided with the materials. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard for me to give, offer more than that, mm -hmm. but I really am um, concerned about talking about the listers purpose or need or desire to consult with an attorney yep. after they've already taken action. Mm -hmm. So That sounds kind of crazy. Let's yeah. just wait till there's legal action. Yeah. That's should, fine. Should we put off further discussion of this until the end of the meeting when we have an executive session scheduled? It's got to be too late. Everyone's. I don't think we need fine. a discussion. I think I that, what, is, that is, is our answer no? The answer is no. Because right. Until there's a legal action, until okay. a legal action occurs. Right. Okay. Because what? like like Judith was saying, the attorney will have plenty of time for exactly. legal action. How quick do you get to court? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it will be able it to. It sounds like they're getting you, worried yeah. unnecessarily. <clears throat> they're worried. Okay. okay. So they want to consult so maybe, maybe, to cover their tracks, but okay. whatever. Yeah. Maybe we should heed Judas's advice and stay not silent. Not talk about this anymore. Yeah. Whatever. We're not getting specific. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Okay. So okay. No. Okay. Yeah. So do, do we need a vote on that or anything? No. No. It's okay. consensus. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're done with J. Banking revisions, which is K. So this is really, we have... Transitions happening of staff in the office. So, current the current town administrator has a credit card that obviously I need to cancel in his name, and would like the approval from the board to apply for one myself, um, so that we can have the town office have a credit card. Um, in addition, we are changing, uh, alter, or adding some people to the bank accounts. We aren't removing just yet. We will um, as the month continues to progress, but to add Michelle and add myself and add Rosie actually to the bank account so that all three of us are able to sign checks. And one of the reasons we are adding Rosie um, is to try to improve our segregation of duties as it relates to signing of checks, approving of invoices, et cetera. So. Okay, so going back to our audit, wasn't there something mentioned Correct. about that? Right. Yes. And Which is a challenge inherently in a small office. I understand, because so, there's no one that's removed 
so when yeah, you, you have you have the person that's entering invoices, yes. signing the checks. Right. Um, so I've already the the previous town administrator did not sign checks. I've already. I want to assume that assume one level of signature in in my role, um, which seems to make sense. Um, but then Rosie, well, we're still working through the semantics of how we want to, and we honestly want to speak with our external auditors as well. Yeah. Um, about how we move forward. Um, so this to is something, avoid that. Correct. Right. To mitigate to mitigate yes. that that significant that that deficiency. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So by authorizing the three of you to sign and get on the account and be signers. Yeah, really, Michelle and I are essentially replacement replacing Bruce and Don. Yeah. We just haven't. We need to do the paperwork to remove them as well. Um, but and, and you're going to work through the problem that we had with the audit Correct. as far as that's who exactly yes and who's okay Correct. as an example i don't have anything to do with invoices at all yes she's kind of perfect right. to sign checks okay <laughs> because of okay that. well yeah. she's no, completely I just want to bring out of the up. process so i just want to bring that up and to make sure that we're conscious of that moving forward correct nothing that's exactly i have no problem yes. with putting these people all of you on the account I just want to make sure that we're conscious of that. That's exactly what we're talking well, about. I, I guess I would like to hear more from the auditors about uh, whether this corrects the material deficiency to put you on, Rosie, because um, I get nothing against you personally. This is just about the position. Uh, it seems to me that if we have a material deficiency about um, separation and number number of people who can uh, sign checks. The issue add a person who can sign checks. The issue is not that the okay. issue the segregation of duties relates to who has access to set up vendors, process accounts payable. Okay. You, I have never been anywhere where you have your accounts payable clerk sign checks, mm -hmm. and that is what we do here, because that person mm -hmm. has the authority <clears throat> to enter invoices to the system. They are also the person cutting the check, and then they're also the person signing mm -hmm. the check. And when you yeah. say accounts payable <clears throat> clerk, you mean the treasurer? That's the no. no. I mean Denise. I mean Denise. Denise. Okay, so Denise has authority now to sign checks. She does sign the checks. Mm -hmm. She so, currently okay. Denise signs the checks and Don signs the checks. Okay, so this uh, this would replace what we have. Denise's name is not on here. Denise is good. still on there right now. We have mm -hmm. not, we are not removing, but even if she's on the account, but she's not physically signing checks, it does help mitigate our issue. I see. But yes, it is something we do want to discuss. It's not, the issue has nothing to do with if you have 20 people on your bank account that can sign checks. Okay. It's who's handling invoices, who is approving invoices, right. and then who's signing checks. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Because that's where you can run into an issue. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with it. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to mitigate. So we're currently yeah. working through some details. We're just trying to get the paperwork going. <laughs> in my old job, I'm not going to say where. <laughs> you can say it. The town, manager signed, okay. the town manager signed the invoices after the supervisor signed the invoices. And then the, the, um, so, well, the business manager wrote the checks and the town clerk signed them. That way it was all... Exactly. Separate. Ideally, you have someone <clears throat> signing checks that is not at all involved in the right. approval of the invoices or right. entry of the invoices right. into the system. Right. That's how we did it. The, yeah. the unique thing we have here that's a difficulty with the town administrator position is I do sign the majority of the invoices. Yes. So me signing checks still doesn't help that much. So right. that's what I want to talk mm -hmm. to the auditors about. Mm -hmm. But Rosie, who does not touch anything in the accounts payable process, mm -hmm. is actually the perfect candidate to right. sign checks. Okay. Right. Because she has no ability in any way, not that you would, um, to... Right. Interfering. Steal money. Because yeah. like, that's really what you're trying to avoid. I was trying to say it. Um, no, I mean, that's, that's what you're trying to avoid. I mean, that's what segregation duties is all about, is you're cutting out the ability for right. someone to yeah. misappropriate money. Exactly. Okay. 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 Well, Great thank move. you for that. Yeah. So, well, so, yeah. pen, so I, I would move then, uh, pending consultation with the auditors about... Uh, the best method of correcting the material deficiency that they found that uh, I move to add as authorized signers to our People's United Bank account Michelle Pallas, Gina Jenkins, and Rosie LeCare. So just to be clear, right. we also are running into a situation where one person that can sign checks is leaving, so I don't know how quickly I'll be able to get things worked out with the auditors to completely discuss who can sign, adding sure. the people. So I just want to make sure if we hold this up, we may have a problem 
making uh, payments soon. No, I, I was, I was, okay, thank you. I'm glad you asked that because it was not my intention with okay, the yeah. motion to yeah, say, okay. wait, wait on this. It was uh, okay. in anticipation of, let's be worded in the beginning, in anticipation of yes. consultation with yes. the auditors oh, about you. correcting the material <laughs> deficiency. Yeah, you, you sound like you were making conditional. So. Yeah, no, that's what no, I just want to make sure. Right, I'm glad we cleared that up. You're going to be audited in two months anyway. Oh, well, I have, a meet, I have a meeting with them on June 29th. So, you know, and, and believe me, this is something there Michelle and I discussed practically on day one. So. So okay. okay. It's so a hot topic for both. You're making a motion basically that you approve the adding the three names. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a second on that? But but with a no notation that we're going to be talking exactly. about. Exactly. Oh, we have John raised his hand first. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. And do we need a se uh, we need a separate motion to um, authorize you to have a credit card, you know? Oh. Um, probably be safe to do that, yeah. That's right, we do. Yeah, so, yes. yeah. so moved. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with a limit of $4,000? Yes, that's what, that's, that's what the current DA has, correct. Okay. And Judith, you have your hand up? Are you seconding it? You're muted. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Right, okay. Aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. <laughs> they do have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next item. Hey, we're almost on time. Discussion on town management in light of COVID-19. Community update. So, do you want me to help make this quick? Yes. Sure. Okay, sure. so for the community update, my, generally I want to discuss, we've been discussing COVID at every meeting, so based on our resolution, one, do we want to continue that? The, right. We are currently at a low status. We all know this keeps coming. I guess, does the board want to continue this process at every meeting where we discuss where we currently are, or do we want to move to a situation or move to an era of the pandemic where if there's an issue, we bring an issue right. to the meeting accordingly and not review a community update we, every We check this off very quickly. We I, do. That's, it is a pandemic. I, I think it's good to keep it okay. in front of us, even, okay. if, even if we don't do a damn thing. Pull it. Is. Huh? The next bullet on this item. So is. the next one is um, a bigger topic, which yes. is the we currently have a vaccination and mitigation policy for employees. Mm -hmm. I reached out to Judith um, because I was trying to figure out what the state was doing because this, the state run COVID uh, testing sites are closing at the end of the month. Yeah. So we our policy requires a PCR test which from the latest VT Digger article I read said, you're gonna be hard pressed to, to find those um, in the state of Vermont. So inherently our pro policy needs to be addressed. Um, so I reached out to Judith to find out what the state is doing. She told me the state has dropped um, their vaccination requirement and their policy. Um, so I would like to also drop our policy. One, I don't see why we need a policy that's more restrictive than the state of Vermont. Um, two, speaking from my perspective as one supervisor of the town office employees and our road foreman, and I have discussed this in great detail, we just both believe that at this point, if the state doesn't have one, there's no way to really practically get PCR tests in particular um, that we think this policy could go away at this point. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with that. Um, one, we have had a policy that's more restrictive than the state of Vermont for many, many months during this pandemic. The state of Vermont dropped its mask mandate back in June of last year, and we started a mask mandate back in the fall and kept it up for many months. So uh, we have show, our townspeople have told us that in that particular case, they, they want something that is stricter than the state of Vermont. Um, I don't know if it has to be a PCR test, uh, but Yes, using the community level tool, we're, we're at low. However, with a case rate of 185 per 100,000 population in the last week, that is almost twice the level of the uh, threshold for high uh, community transmission under the old standard that they say that they, they don't want us to pay attention to anymore because hospital bed occupancy is more important. Um, there are a lot of people who are still getting sick. and uh, and getting sick hard from, from this, and uh, long COVID seems to affect people who are vaccinated as well as unvaccinated. So I'm uncomfortable with us doing anything to 
reduce the incentive for our employees to, to get vaccinated. I think what's tough is when we speak to the employees, I think there's, go ahead. No, I'm not sure what you're going well, to say. Well, I mean, I, I don't know that, again, just, I, I think, I, I personally think we should drop this policy. I think it's administratively a pain for mm -hmm. the managers to have to deal with um, because whatever testing pr protocol you're gonna propose then, have to we have to follow and we have to administer um, what, with a very about, limited staff. Okay, so we're just talking about one person on Roku. What did, what did Guthrie think? Because he's the one that works. He with. has communicated with his entire staff and they would like the policy to go away. Yeah. So my that's who would, that's who's important. The office What's yeah. that? And my understanding is that there may have been, and again, not names or anything, but the majority of folk have been vaccinated and it was a small, small, percentage who have not yes. and if that that small percentage after you know nine ten months of this policy hasn't been vaccinated i don't think keeping the policy is going to get them vaccinated no um, you know they've had to adhere to the testing and they've done that and it's a pain and it's a pain administratively um and i, I you know i'm one of the ones who was a proponent of this but i think that um, it, we, we've done what we can to incentivize vaccination of our employees and any employee can wear a mask um, at any time um, and it's for, unfortunately for those employees who haven't been vaccinated if they get sick they may get sicker than the employees who have been vaccinated and boosted but if the state um, has chosen not to with its massive you know, large um, staff um, and large population of employees, and it hasn't, I'm not seeing that it's really impacted some of the numbers. I, I think it would be hard for us to justify keeping it going forward. Um, if conditions significantly change, we can yeah. reevaluate this. Yes. Well, we had, um, but we had a positive case in the office just a week, week before, right, week before last. Mm -hmm. And we addressed it. You know, when we followed the CDC protocol, the person was out of the office for five days. We actually extended an extra day out of safety sake because we are in tighter quarters right now with some of us sharing offices. Um, that person, when they returned to work, they were masked. Um, then, and we're negative at that point, by the way, um, per a, a at home test. So I think we're handling it with common sense. And as the situations arise, and I think that that is a fair and appropriate way to handle it going forward right now. Yes. And I think that road employee got COVID, didn't he? He did, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, do we, what, what do we need to do here? We need to make the policy go away. I mean, I, I, that's what I think. I, mean, I think that we should make the policy go also, away. Judith has also, Judith has also, Kyle does not, that's okay. Mm -hmm. We can disagree sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> John, what do you think? I think the policy should go away. Okay. So we should make a motion in this to that effect. I move that we have this policy go away. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Do you want me to be a little we bit more? Worse? It? <laughs> no, that's okay. All right. We can wordsmith it a little bit. Well, for dear dress, say. Yeah. Um, I move that we. Uh, a band. Res yes, rescind. Yes, I like that. Rescind. Our erstwhile policy of our COVID. <laughs> our <laughs> COVID. Yeah, COVID. COVID yes. It Thank says, you. It's right here. In, uh, it's it's in this. on this. Okay. This form. Do we have a second on that? Very good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John got his hand up first. No, He's no, quick. I think okay, we'll give it to Judith. I don't want Judith on We'll there. give it to Judith. <laughs> Judith second it. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Yeah. Oh, the voting for it? I'm uncomfortable with it. But, he uh, flipped. But, but given, given that uh, the right. road crew right. is in favor of it. Then all right, I'll yeah, vote. exactly. Right. I, I pointed the yes, that question. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, next item. Oh my God. Development of select board's summer schedule. You have a summer schedule. We have a proposed summer schedule somewhere agenda. there. I, did, did you include that? I, I, I apologize. Oh, I apologize. shoot. I didn't see that. Yeah, I, 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 I
Probably not. Hold on. You can even just tell me. Um, I'll just write it down. What our schedule is? Yeah. June 20th. Yeah. June 20th? Yeah. July 11th. August 1st. August 22nd. September 12th. I'm not available July 11th, but I'm not irreplaceable. So. You are irreplaceable. <laughs> we'll miss you. What are you talking about? And there is a um, meeting with the fire department on August 11th as well. <clears throat> That's what? at 7 p.m. So we do dual purpose? That would be a dual purpose meeting? No, that's always on I, Thursday. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, I was looking yeah. at July 11th, August yeah. 11th. Yeah. God. Um, pretty nice, pretty nice meeting schedule. August 11th yeah. is for the fire department. Okay, I will not be here that day. Okay. Okay. I'm out that week. And the select board will resume its normal first and third Monday schedule in October. Does this mean we only have one meeting in September? Yay. Yeah, okay. I can look They canceled that. the September 19th one. I guess you could have one on the 26th, right? Yeah. If it's two weeks. Yeah, we, could, we can live with that. Well, we can always call a special meeting if it's too much work to do. Sure. Right? Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. Yeah. We have that option. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys you guys got me to take that Central Vermont Solid Waste Management board member thing. You know, I'm on the executive board, I'm on Are you two really? other committees. Yes. I just talked to Lisa the other day and she is so Love psyched you. to have you on there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a serious job. I mean, she said well, East Montpelier has good representation. <laughs> yeah, you liar. Thank you. No, no, true. Do you want some more jobs? No. <laughs> No, thank you. Um, okay, we did the summer schedule. Uh, appointments, town treasurer, Michelle Pallas. I would like to appoint, or like you, to appoint Michelle Pallas treasurer through June 30th. This will be through 2022. Have we not done and that? Then she, no, she is not officially. <laughs> and part of the reason we're wanting to do that is the banks tend to like to deal with the appointed town treasurer. Yeah, so. Right. so we need a motion. <laughs> we need a motion. Uh, so, so moved. Very. Oh, you made the motion. Okay. Sure. Second. I second that. Very good. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. We're back on time, folks. We're going folks. pretty fast, don't we? Yeah. We're back on time. Uh, are we moving too fast for you, man? No. Oh, okay. Impressive. Uh, warrants. <laughs> we have the. So we have the special warrant that was. Uh, that I signed. That was that you signed, and yes. there is a copy of that included yeah. in the yeah. packets. Okay. Yep. That is for the truck. Yes. Yeah. Um, That's just. And then the, here is the warrant for the current for the board's review. Is there a personnel matter? Just looking down the list of stuff um, to do. There is one listed on. The, well, yeah, it is. I see it. But I don't know. Oh, that the personnel matter is just for you. It's more of a reminder for that. I need you all to sign the personnel policy, the revised policy. Oh, is that all? That was there approved. Was? Like, I thought, I thought yeah, there was an additional one. No, well, no. I think we have. I think we've now discussed that we're going to continue with the zoning on next Monday. Yeah. So okay. okay. I don't think we will right. be going into that. Right. Yeah. So we have a special meeting next Monday at six thirty to continue with the discussion of the zoning. Is well, I, don't, I, yeah, I won't be here for that. Right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, actually, the meeting went so much smoothly, more smoothly when you were here. So. It did. Yeah. You were like half an hour behind when I got here. <laughs> Come on. But look what we accomplished. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so where are I we? What's you. going on? You missed one. I missed you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. So now we're passing around the warrants. And there is, is there other business? Because I wasn't here. There is. No, there's no uh, additions <clears throat> to the agenda. Okay. So we're nearing the end of this. Yeah, and the memo order. I have for the town administrator report. Just I, you have a copy of the permit application mm -hmm. report. We had six new applications since the last meeting for a total of 39 for the year, and then I provided you some information on two items. The DRB um, will be reviewing mm -hmm. tomorrow. Tomorrow mm -hmm. at their meeting. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Should you want to read that? Oh, we had to write the big check to. Uh, yes, that yeah, has the Washington big, That has the, the school the school check. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. It is a big warrant, though. <laughs> yeah, big in dollars. But it is a foreseen cost. <laughs> yeah. It just while we're under other business, when I talked to Lisa Lotig, the uh, exec executive director of uh, Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District, the other day, then I uh, encouraged her to come before the board because she has not come. She's been on the job for like a year and a half and hasn't come to, to visit us yet. And uh, she said that they are. Um, working on the new hazardous waste facility and when they have more idea about what that will look like and uh, what implications that might have for the towns in terms of the per capita tax, then uh, she would schedule meetings. Did they, did they find a piece of land? Um, no, but they're looking at several. Okay. Oh, okay. So they have Potential sites. What's, are there any uh, I should strong start. front but, runners in that? Well, there's one in Berlin that's a fairly large site, but somebody's, the, the owners, I think, has been willing to uh, downsize it and, and, and actually subdivide a piece of property for them. I think they were talking about eight acres or something like that. Nice. And then there's a site right in Barry City, that, like an old stone shed, where, oh. which is only like a couple acres, but um, it has a building that's there and um, it's zoned, oops, and it's, uh, it's appropriately zoned for what they want to do there. And, just doesn't give them a lot of sight to grow, but it's in walking distance to the um, to the uh, recycling place that they have now down where the Times Argus used to be. Oh, the Ark. The Ark. That's what it was. Yeah. The yep. Ark. So that would be cheaper because it's already building. Yeah, but you're gonna have to renovate it. It's an old stone shed too. You never know what you're gonna find in the ground. I know. I I kind of like the eight acre idea because yeah, that's up on the hill, money. up up in Berlin. You know, up. Uh, up Berlin Street, up that way, but you can come down from the interstate that way too, and, and get to the site. That sounds like a good site, but it's not. But there's no not, water. There's no, you know, no public water there at this point. No sewer. Yeah, where in Barry they would have water and sewer already. Right. Um, so there's there's positives or negatives. I I think off the top I would probably prefer the Berlin site just because it's easier to get to for everybody. You have to drive through Barry and everything, but Barry's not that hard to drive through. But not like it, but it has more potential though in the long run. Yes, the for them site. to enlarge, for them to do everything in one place. Exactly, I mm -hmm. think that's a better idea. Yeah, it's going to cost them more money, but well, that's the the big issue is they they're downsizing this project because they don't really have the money, and no. if they don't move ahead with the project, the state of Vermont has threatened to pull the grant they're going to give them for the building. Mm -hmm. They got to move ahead. Yeah, because every time you know every month the pro project cost goes up. Oh, I know because oh, it's of awful. The, the so other is this problem be though. More like a is this going to be a depot, or is this actually going to be the incineration site? No, it's no, it's just a holding site. Okay. So you drive in with your vehicle. Yep. You have some paint or something. You put it here. If you have some old oil, you put it there. But then they and put it. Drive some, they bring it somewhere else, though. Yep. It's not going to be yep. actually. But were they going to do composting there? Because at one point they were going to when they were looking at another site. I'm not what sure they would do composting there. No, I don't person. think so. Oh, they do have to start taking dog. shingles though, Warren. from oh. the roof shingles and stuff like and that. So they're not going to take food scraps and all that. I. Can't they say were originally. They were, well, I know they have like the town of Hardwick has a place. They actually, uh, the food scraps are actually handled by another by a company for, for the central Watt solid waste. So they oh. may do that, hire somebody to do that, have a contract to do it. All right. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I we haven't talked about that at all. Well, you could bring it up. I will. Yeah. I'd like to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One final comment. I feel like we're nearing a journey. Um, oh, you are. Is, is it, not me. I said you. I feel yeah. like you guys are nearing that. Um, is we've had a lot of questions. Not a lot. There have been some questions around. Our, is there going to be a celebration for our retiring town yes. administrator? Right. I'm glad you brought that. As well oh. as, as most of you are probably well aware, our current or previous town administrator is not one for celebration. Yeah. So yeah. he has requested that. Zero. Right, nothing. Nothing. So I just wanted to mention that to the board. So Can we buy him a gift card though, just for books or something? For, I mean, that's, that was my idea. Too. Yeah, I mean, I think doing something low key, I think I he think would be okay card, with, but I've he. With the, with the, I'm gonna go and buy him a like a gift certificate from Bear Pond Books or something, and then we'll all, I'll bring and, a card to the next meeting. And well, Rosie already said, asked me about getting a card, did she? 
he, he is not fun. he's not interested in a card shower no. option. So he No, no, I just a card. Yeah, one I mean card. I think if there's yeah, I think if there's one card you may be able I'll I'll talk to him. <laughs> Well, well if, if we give him one card and send it to him, <laughs> good enough. Oh, yeah, it might, actually might be better if you send it to him in the mail. Right. Than, yeah, that, that would be better. No, I'm, I'm send it to him, Yeah. Okay. I was, I'm so glad you brought that up because I was going to bring that up. Like, okay, so should we right. just give him a gift card? Should I give him a, should I get him a gift card for the bookstore or something? I mean, I mean he, I'd he, love to have a gift card if I was leaving but okay I, i'll give him a gift he, I don't he know. seems like he would read i don't know his other hobbies but <laughs> does he have other hobbies did you see him um they they like to drive up in northern vermont and look at the lake <clears throat> seems like to do that and then his son moved up to cabin yeah. in some place they can't really get into yeah into so he goes up there and, so he likes uh, to be alone yes yeah <laughs> he likes to mow his lawn so he likes to mow his lawn okay yeah, I need a, a book. Of the thing is, he always works so much. He doesn't I have know. time for hobbies. He's almost going to have to get some hobbies. But he's going to go to Florida and he'll read books. Okay. Hmm. He lost Carl. He likes to go out to dinner. Does he? Doesn't he? He does down in Florida. I know he does. He doesn't as much here. Yeah, yeah. So a gift certificate for like Bahama Breeze. <laughs> <laughs> well, gift certificates of books are pretty safe. Yeah, that's to safe. somebody that's, yes, that's safe. Fairly intellectual. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's smart. Yes, he is. Okay. I don't know. It's a good question. He doesn't have many hobbies. I don't he know. would love this detailed conversation about what to give him, though. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right here on local news at <laughs> nine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just saying. Yeah, right. This is the attention he doesn't want. But I did want to Bruce just, Bruce, and, and Bruce just text us. If, what, and he he doesn't do that either. No, so. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I really hope he doesn't watch this. <laughs> he won't. I know. Okay. The thing is, it's nice to um, get across to him how we have appreciated all he's done. Agree. So that's, that's the, the difficult. Yeah. Well, just talk to him personally. Well, that's actually a comment he made is, you know, he goes, if people want to say goodbye and talk to me, come, you know, talk to me. Don't, don't put that in there. <laughs> yeah. That'll upset him. <laughs> yeah. But, and truly, I mean, that's kind of what's happening, you know, as people are mm -hmm. coming in and they're yeah. needing a permit or they're, you know, they're popping in and right. meeting me and right. talking to him. Right. And so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next meeting okay. is, is what, what day is the next meeting? The 20th. It's a week from today, the 13th. Well, so no, you have, have a meeting, but I don't. Um, right. but, the, but the 20th is our regular meeting. And Deidre, I don't think you need to come to our meeting yeah, on the 13th, because yeah, the easy. minutes are going to yeah, be very, very short. So. Yeah, that so would be very boring. Yeah. Should, I, should I, I mean, is this like completely dumb if I bought a card and a gift card and we all signed it? I mean, is that dumb or should we each buy our own It's card? not dumb. Well, it's, I don't know. Don't you, don't you offended. do that? Okay. I don't think yeah. he's going to be offended by okay. that. I'll I do think that. that's good. So for the yes. next meeting, I will do that, and then we'll all, I mean, maybe we, well, you can write we'll your 50 it. remarks on a separate piece of paper or something like that, just, you know, so it's not just like, thanks for the memories, Bruce, or, you know, just like something a little more. <laughs> thanks for the memories. <laughs> thanks for the permit process. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody zones better than you. <laughs> it's, it's almost like you should say that in person, though. Yeah. It's I like, think so. Yeah. A card is nice and yeah. we can sign it or do whatever. But if we have things we want to say, it's yeah. nice to say in person. That's true. Mm -hmm. I don't do well with that though. Like I have to write it. Like I'm if sorry. I say if I okay, if well, I, that's okay. if I if I give my fees. I'm gonna do the in person. That works for me. Okay. He he appreciates in person pretty. He does. He does. He does. Okay. He does. All right. Well I'll try. What? Well, Are you gonna do something? <laughs> I make Finally? a motion that we adjourn. Don't you want to talk about this tomorrow? We can talk about it after. No, we can't. Yeah. The second. No, you can't. Are no. you kidding me? No. We'd be having a meeting. Wait, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Are we going to follow through the motion? All those in favor? No. Who, do we have a second? I seconded it. Oh, okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.